Today I'm going to talk about generative AI and how it impacts human lives, our lives, every day. So I want to begin today's talk by asking all of you a series of questions. By the show of hands, how many of you have used generative AI? Four. Let me change my question. So how many of you have heard about generative AI? OK, I see more hands. Let me change my question one more time. So how many of you have used chat GPT? OK, so it's everyone. Um, so the world as we know it was changed and transformed about a year ago when a company called OpenAI launched its platform called ChatGPT. And it does transform all of our lives. OpenAI, the company, received more than $10 billion in funding from Microsoft to develop its tools and its models to therefore create ChatGPT. Right, so now let me turn a little bit to what we encounter almost every day, Netflix. How is it possible that Netflix seems to know what to suggest for you to watch next time around? How, does it, how is it possible that they seem to know what movie or what TV series to suggest to you? How about scrolling through TikTok or Instagram Reels? How is it possible that these apps seem to understand what video to suggest you next to watch? Or if you use Alexa or Google at home, how is it possible that once they hear your prompt, your instruction or your question, then they will exactly know what to yield to you? how to answer to you, and how to act on your questions or instructions. So put it simply, we now live in a world where AI or Gen AI is just omnipresent. All these tools are powered by Gen AI. But what is Gen AI really? Gen AI refers to a type of AI that is able to generate new, previously unseen content, data, or information based on the patterns it has learned during its training process. So the results that Gen AI can produce can come and manifest in various ways. For example, through images, through text, through videos, music, or even voices. So let's take a tour on some of these examples, right? I'm pretty sure none of you have ever seen this picture, Adobe Surfing. Why? Because I generated this one using Adobe Firefly. I, I inputted a prompt, Doc Surfing, into Adobe Firefly's website, and they produce this new image that is never seen before. So now you can grasp the, con the context and the idea of how Gen AI produce contents. How about this? AI tools can also help you to transform voices, audio file, into text. So in the past, a lot and a lot of people were employed as typists. What they're doing is basically listening to recording and they need to type down what they hear. Now, we don't need them anymore. We have AI tool to help us to ease our jobs. And I'm pretty sure you've encountered this many times over. When you scroll through TikTok, sometimes you see videos with voiceover. And that voiceover sounds robotic. And that is exactly a Gen AI in a work. So the content creator will input text, and the Gen AI within TikTok will create the audio, which sounds a bit robotic.
Another use case for Gen AI is what I use every day when I go into the office. Prior to Gen AI, prior to ChatGPT, I spend half an hour, an hour, just to dwell into news outlets, trying to find the interesting news that I encounter every day and try to understand what's going on. Now, I spend less than 10 minutes to just read through all of them because ChatGPT helped me to summarize all of those. Now, I wanna, talk, I wanna shift our talk a little bit into the economic impact of Gen AI. So a study by McKinsey and company finds that Gen AI could contribute between 2.6 up to $4.4 trillion into the global economy. So just to put it into perspective, the whole GDP of the United Kingdom, which by the way is a developed country, is at $3.1 trillion. So having up to $4.4 do trillion added into our global economy simply makes Gen AI the fourth or the fifth largest economy in the world. Just imagine how massive they are. Another study by Bain and company found that Gen AI could increase productivity ranging from 27 up to 41% depending on which verticals you're working in or what you're looking at. And another internal study conducted by Boston Consulting Group in collaboration with professors from Harvard, MIT, and Wharton found that the internal BCG consultants involved in this study, hundreds of them worldwide, saw an increase in productivity by 40% across the board. So what does it say, right? But before that, as promised, I wanna take a deep dive into how ChatGPT work. You've seen it a little bit earlier, but I just wanna show you why is it life-changing and how will it transform our lives even further moving forward. So I work in a venture capital, so let me just input this prompt into ChatGPT. What is venture capital? So this is the first use of ChatGPT, right? It can explain to you in simple terms a concept that is foreign to you that you don't understand. It can yield a paragraph explaining what is venture capital. If you, if you have a finance background, it's easy to understand what ChatGPT is trying to say. But if you're like me, having no finance background whatsoever, it might be challenging to understand what ChatGPT is saying. So by only using a simple trick, you can make it more understandable. So here, I input it in the prompt, explain a venture capital for finance, a, a non-finance person. And then it will use daily life example like Bob and Alice to explain what is a venture capital, what does it do, how does it work, you name it. Another use of ChatGPT, which probably some of you will find useful, is that if you're a student and you're writing your undergrad thesis, you can ask ChatGPT to actually think about what you should write in your script C. Which part, what should, what should you write, and how do you structure your thoughts along the process? Recently, actually, a friend of mine just got into an investment banking firm here in Jakarta, an international investment banking firm. And as you know, if you try to get into an investment banking firm, there is a case practice or a case interview. And to pass that case interview, my friend used ChatGPT to do the case practice. Guess what? ChatGPT is so smart, it can give you cases, and my friend got into that firm. So now, let me just turn to this question, because I've been asked so many times over about this. Should we fear AI? Should I fear AI? Is there anything that I should fear about AI? But I think the more interesting question would have been, will AI or Gen AI make you lazy or lazier? Well, in my opinion, it shouldn't. We should treat Gen AI as a tool that push us to our boundaries of productivity and creativity. It should help us to think. It should help us to be more productive in our time. 
pushing the creativity that we have, giving inputs, giving ideas, brainstorm ideas. And the rule of thumb is to remember that Gen AI is a tool. Gen AI is never the destination. So today I'd like to share three rules of thumb with you on how to use Gen AI or the things that you need to remember when you use Gen AI tools. Number one, always double check and fact check. Why? Because Gen AI is a tool created by humans which could yield er error at times. There's this term commonly, know commonly known by people who commonly use Gen AI or ChatGPT, for example, called hallucination. If you ask ChatGPT something, it can give you a very convincing answer without even checking whether that's factually correct or not. Many times over, we face this, and we saw this on ChatGPT. So it is within our power and within our authority and within our responsibility to always check whether what it is saying is true or not. Number two, never, ever, ever input proprietary information because Gen AI tools always use data and put it into its system to continuously learn and improve itself. So what constitutes proprietary information? Phone number, email address, data that your company only owns, house address, you name it. So never ever train the model using proprietary information. And the third one is be transparent on when Gen AI is used. Many schools, especially in Indonesia, I've heard, have banned the use of Gen AI or ChatGPT. Is it wise? That's out of the question today. I'm not gonna comment on that. But in my opinion, Gen AI is inevi inevitable. Almost everyone will use it. But what's important for everyone to dearly hold is that we need to be transparent when Gen AI is used. Whether we use Gen AI to explain something, to make us understand something, to structure our thoughts, to create an outline, or even to write a whole paragraph. I think what's, most, what's, what's more important is acknowledging that Gen AI is used throughout the process and be transparent about it. So now, now that we understand that Gen AI is inevitable, Let's talk a little bit about education. So our education system was primarily built upon the foundation of the first industrial revolution more than 300 years ago, when humans were seen as labor, doing repeated work, manual labor. And that is why rote learning was the model in the beginning. But now, with tech on our fingertips, Finding the birth date of an important figure or finding the independence date of a country or the capital city of a province will only require you one split second to know. And that will be the history of the past. Road learning will not shape our future. And that leads us to think, what should our education moving forward in the future look like. These are the three skills that I believe our education system should equip our students and ge young generation with. Number one is the ability to think critically, to think logically, and to be critical of issues surrounding all of us. And the second one a, B, oh, sorry, 1B is problem solving. How do we solve problems presented to us with a method that is logical throughout the process? Number two is creativity and innovation. How do we think without a box? How do we solve a problem in a creative way? How do we innovate every step of the way when we solve a problem? And this includes when we try to use a different solution used in different use cases 
to solve another problem with similar patterns. And the third one is communication and collaboration. And let me break it down into two, communication and collaboration. Communication, right? If students know how to solve a problem, but they don't know how to communicate their solution, the problem will remain there. The problem will not be solved because no one will solve it because no one communicates what the solution is. Secondly, collaboration. In an increasingly specialized society, it's important for all of us to have the emotional intelligence to understand that no one is good at everything. Some people have specialty to solve problem A, some people have specialty to solve problem B. And having the emotional intelligence to understand that every, everyone is different, every individual is different, and we need to work collaboratively in a team to solve a problem becomes more important. So now we're nearing the end of my talk, and I just want you to remember the next time you heard about Gen AI, it's not a distant tech. It's not just a code. It's not algorithms. It's omnipresent in our lives. It surrounds, it surrounds us every day. So now the next time you ask me, should we fear AI? This is my answer. Gen AI will not replace humans. Gen AI will replace humans who cannot embrace them. Thank you.